So, I'd like us all for the next five minutes to think about an idea called wise feedback. So the problem we often face um, as teachers, educators, is how can we deliver critical feedback that maintains the high standards that we want from our students, whilst also leaving the receiver motivated and their self-efficacy enhanced? How can we leave people knowing they can do a better job? Steele, who works, was working in a high school in the United States in 1992, started to look at this problem. He started to notice that the um, students he was working with were unable to absorb um, the feedback he was giving them and also were very anxious um, about um, what he was writing in terms of his feedback. Um, he noticed they were reading between the lines, as he put it. Um, so if you have a quick read of this, You can see here that um, Steele wanted to be clear that what he was writing, even between the lines, um, was hitting the mark when it came to um, what his students were able to absorb. So here he talks about wanting them to read between the lines that you are valued as a student or staff member, not because of where you are right now, not because of your current skill level, but because of your potential, um, because of your ability, he says. Um, and also that any failures or setbacks that they may come across is just a result of you um, attempting to face a great challenge. That's the way he wanted people to, um, to think about his feedback when he gave it. So he was working from an idea um, by a social, social science um, practitioner called Irving Goffman, um, as most of you would have heard of, I assume, um, who wrote a book called Stigma. So he thought about stigma and how stig people are stigmatised. Uh, he, uh, Irving Goffman defines stigma as a process where the reaction of others spoil an otherwise normal identity. Uh, and within stigma, um, Irving Goffman characterises an idea called WISE, which actually comes from the LGBTIQ plus community. So he was talking to people from that community about the stigma they were facing, and they, they were telling him about an idea called WISE. So in the phone book of a um, local bar where Ivan Goffman was drinking, he noticed the word WISE next to GPs, next to florists, next to funeral directors. Uh, the word WISE would be written in pencil. Uh, and he asked the people in that community why they did this, and they said, well, WISE are when people can see through my stigma into my humanity. So these are wise, these are people who are wise to who I am and treat me normally and treat me with respect. So uh, Steele was very um, uh, uh, in inspired by this idea and uses, off, uh, uses off Irving Goffman's idea of wise in, in, this, in this idea of feedback. So Steele was working with, heart, with high school students, but in order to adapt the idea of wise feedback to the higher education environment, we have to add um, other things to it. So the first thing we add in terms of absorbing feedback is this idea of um, stereotype threat. Uh, so stereotype threat is the threat we all face um, by believing that um, the, 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 the lies or the myths or the stories that are told about our people or identities, um, our stereotypes are true. Um, so, uh, you know, boys only like sports and engineering and girls only like um, sewing and nursing. Um, once we begin to once we begin to believe those, um, Steele and Ross and others um, define that as a stereotype threat. That's the threat of what can happen if we begin to under, um, absorb our own stereotype, and that can get in the way of us being able to hear what people say about us. Also, Bandura and others have talked about the idea of imposter syndrome, which is rife in a higher education environment. And imposter syndrome is the idea that we shouldn't really be there. Um, and we shouldn't really be in the job we're in or we shouldn't be really doing the course we're doing. And at some point, someone's going to come along and point us out as being an imposter. Um, so both those ideas, stereotype threat and imposter syndrome, stop us from absorbing the feedback that we're given. Finally, um, in terms of constructing feedback, so from the point of view of the person writing the feedback, so from the point of view of the educator or the reviewer or whoever's writing the feedback. Um, Butler talks about an idea of there being task-involving or ego-involving issues. So task-involving is what the person writing the feedback is doing. So they're marking, they have a lot of marking to do. Their feedback is a task that they're doing. Um, but for the person receiving the feedback, uh, 
the, the, um, it's ego involving. So it means a lot to their sense of self and how they think about their abilities and their potential. So there are two things going on. One person is doing a job, one person is getting a task completed, the other person is receiving that, the results of that task, um, and it's informing, informing how they feel about themselves. It forms their own ego. So the, the proposal is when we, when we try to apply wise feedback in the higher, educated, in the higher education setting, uh, wise feedback is where um, abilities and belonging are explicitly promoted. So within your feedback, within feedback that you're writing to a student, think about how have you talked, not necessarily just about their deficits, but how have you talked about their abilities. So looking here uh, with a focus on abilities, uh, we're looking on the potential uh, within the restricted context that that student's working. So it's not about the, um, hamburg, the, the feedback hamburg, where you talk about you know, the good, the difficult, and then the good again. This is very different. So this is about looking at someone and looking at their abilities and thinking about how could, how could that person's abilities help inform or help um, develop what you think uh, and you've assessed as, as being their deficits. So we're talking from the point of abilities. So how can that person's abilities, how can that person's um, first foray into critical thinking, how could that help them then move on to synthesize it, synthesizing uh, various models? Um, and how can you help them think about how to do that? So a focus on abilities. Secondly, a focus on belonging. Now this can be to the institution or to a community of practice. Um, higher education isn't necessarily known for being the most welcoming of environments. It's quite exclusive, institutions become very institutionalised and coming into an institution can be a very daunting and difficult prospect for someone. So if the feedback they're getting from you um, about their work focuses on the fact that they belong to this, they belong to this um, profession, uh, they belong to this community of practice, or they belong to this institution, uh, it can do a lot to overcome imposter syndrome. So in terms of what we're wanting to do, we need to build the self-efficacy um, to achieve the high standards that we want our students to meet. One way of doing this, this is just a proposal, um, so in, in, a, in a piece of feedback, a structure could be, um, describe firstly what you're feeding back. Uh, secondly, describe the high standards that you're expecting from that person. And then discuss, uh, give, the, give that person an assurance of the ability and the potential and how that ability can help uh, maintain and meet the standards that you're expecting. And then include some promotion of belonging. Um, in the research I have done, the promotion of belonging becomes the hardest thing to, to know how to do. Um, it can be very, very subtle. Um, a, I was talking to a fellow teacher at one point and I was speaking to them and I said, well, you know, as a teacher, as an educator, um, you need to think more critically about this and that, that, I think that would really help your, your practice. Um, and they were sort of looking at me gobsmacked and I, I said, what's wrong? Um, and they said, you could just called me a teacher. No one's ever called me a teacher before. I'm a geologist. No one's ever ref re referred to me as an educator. Um, and, and that feels good. You know, that, that, that's, that means a lot to me. Um, so the idea of promoting belonging can be very, very subtle. Um, but it can be equally very, very effective. So here's an example um, just pulled out of, of WISE feedback. I'll just give you a moment to have a look at that. So if we could look there at ability, firstly, um, the very last line of that, that, um, that piece. So it says here, however, your approach to assessment is well constructed and with continued reflection will over time begin to produce the re desired results. Um, there's something about faith in there. There's something about projecting the idea that you have faith that this person can do that. These slides will be available. You'll be able to read this in more detail um, after, after the, uh, the session today. So just to end here a little bit on, on feedback tips. So these are tips I, I, would, I, would, um, I would suggest you use when writing feedback or think about as you're writing feedback. Um, so first of all, write directly to the receiver. 
don't write in the third person. Um, avoid perhaps using the first name, that, uh, depending on the context, that can seem overly friendly. Um, so you have to keep it formal, um, but at the same time, make sure you're writing to the person. So use clear statements that are linked to the criteria and to the standards. Um, and this is something we've spoken about earlier when we talked about constructive alignment, um, clear statements that make sense to the student um, in terms of referring perhaps to the rubric. Use wise feedback principles, as I've been discussing here, to promote not only the ability of the person, but how, those, how the skills that lie within their abilities will help them solve the deficits that you were also pointing out. Um, and also to um, um, give that person um, acknowledgement and encouragement that they belong here and they belong on the course that they're doing. One thing um, I found that um, academics aren't terribly good at doing is using adverbs and adjectives. Um, we tend to get those drummed out of us, do we not, when we're beginning to learn how to write academically. And actually saying something's lovely or beautiful or saying something was very uh, well done is a useful way of, um, of uh, helping someone understand what it is they're doing. Write in a tone that is constructive and also developmental. Um, and remember the issue I talked about in terms of ego involving uh, versus task involving. So remember that as you're writing, for you it's a task, for you it's um, uh, getting through a piece of marking on a Thursday afternoon. But for the person receiving that uh, feedback, um, it will be everything. It will be, um, it, it, it can mean uh, the difference between staying or not staying or continuing with, with, with their course. And remember that your feedback can maybe read by a number of different people at different times. Um, so um, think about that. Think about the respect you're using for that person. Think about, uh, imagine that this is going to be read by three or four different people. Um, and they may at some point be looking at how you've communicated uh, to, to this particular student or staff member. Well, thank you for your time. Um, this, these slides will be available um, as part of the pack that will come with this, um, this, this particular this module. And um, I hope you find it useful. And I hope to meet you um, in person at some point down the road. Thank you very much. <laughs>